What is going on guys? So I'm going to show you how to do this basic splash effect um, that I have in uh, my stylized scene. So at the bottom of obviously the waterfall we're getting the splash coming up. And I'm going to be showing you how to do that today. So first off let's load up the tutorial like I always do to show you guys what it looks like. So it's not too bad, there's a lot of repeating stuff. Uh, we're using a Perlin noise, so if you haven't got a Perlin noise, you can always type stuff into Google and find stuff. Um, Perlin noise. I'm, I'm specifically using literally this one after typing in, what did I type in? Noise map texture seamless, that one. But if you go Perlin noise texture seamless, you'll probably get, probably get a couple come up. But yeah, that's specifically the one I'm using. Now, if you've got other noise maps that you want to use, you can use those. It's all up to experimentation. So we've got our scaler, so that way I could change the scale of it dynamically. Panner to make it move. I've you don't need this many. I have this many, so that way it's over time it's just gonna become more random because what these are doing is the textures are essentially going into each other. Like if I go start preview. Go plain. Oh, yeah. It's literally just panning. But because they're like overlaying each other, it makes it way more chaotic. So we come to here when it will add together. You see, you're getting this chaotic effect of like them all just sort of going on top of each other. Might not need to have this many, but. That's what I ended up with. So let's make that today. So as always, right click, material, uh, bottom, foam, whatever. Load that up. Let's put that down here. I always keep my actual material on my other monitor as reference, just in case I forget something. So let's start from the bot like the back that we got. So let's full screen it, why not? That's not full screen. So let's get our hold U left click for a text coordinate node. Now what I do here is I set up a multiply and the reason I do this, I know uh, one cause it's so a one and left click. The reason I do this is that way you can change your scale of anything. If you're ever wanting to scale a texture dynamically, just by having a simple node here, you can now change the scale of it whenever you want. So I have the set of one. Now I need panel node. Now, if I want to do exactly like I had earlier, I need four of these. But we'll make one and then I'll duplicate the entire thing, right? Because that'd be easier. So connect, oops, connect that to our coordinate to make sure that's obviously being um, being scaled. We'll want to change our number. And we want a texture. So you can you can actually type in texture sample, okay? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Um, but I'm going to drag it in because that's what I usually do. Boom, done. Pop that into UVs. Now that'll make it pan when I type in some numbers. The numbers I'm going to be using is 0.2 here. And again, that will literally just be making it pan. Nothing too fancy. Then, this one I actually added recently. I'm going to cheap contrast. And I won't add... I won't add my, note, my constant quite yet. I'll do that in a second because I'm going to start duplicating this. So these are the three nodes I then need to duplicate. So boom, boom, boom. Now there's a hundred different ways you could probably do a foam like this. I did it this way because it sort of fit my scene. Uh, it's just how I wanted to do it. So connect all these up. Put a one constant in, so one left click over here. Connect that up to control all our contrast. You can have it all independent if you want and make a very unique sort of texture that changes a lot over time. If you change loads of values over and over again, you'll end up having something very chaotic. Um, we're gonna go minus 0.2. Now I'm just duplicating the settings I had already. But again, you could change these to whatever you want. In fact, you can, you can probably get away with just using two. I just wanted to use 
four because I thought it would make it more chaotic. More sort of randomized, you get me? So I got basically one, let's see. Oh, I've only got one that goes in that direction, or did I put it in the wrong place? Oh, I do, wow. I've only got one that goes in um, the Y direction. Preferably, you probably actually want to put a second one that goes in the Y direction. My results are pretty good earlier, so maybe I don't need to do that, but whatever, we'll, we'll do that. So now you've done that, you then need to start adding these together. So I just done a ton of ad nodes and I went boom, 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 and it looks cool. So much spaghetti. Now divide that. Now I divide it by four because it's more, it's adding four, essentially it's adding four maps together. So I divide it by four to get it back to like a value of one, if that makes sense. Quick maths, you know what I mean? back so is that proving this it won't be like over the top bright you'll get like something like this so there's lots of add values on top of each other now and then the contrast will allow us to adjust that so when you go, go over to, to that value we into our contrast right click it convert and we'll call it contrast cool now I want a What's it called? A radial gradient. The reason I want that is because when we're finished, I don't want all of this to be bubble. If even though I'm using a plane, so that's another thing. The asset you're going to be putting it on should be a high poly plane. It doesn't have to be too high poly because we'll be tessellating it as well. But if you're like in Myra Blender, you know, all you need to do is more like eight times, maybe something like that, maybe more. You'll have to experiment it till you feel like it's not too low poly but again we'll be tessellating it so i'll be adding a lot of the additional geometry anyway i've already got a high poly plane plane in the engine so i don't need to import a new one all right so now we want a radial gradient the reason we want that and i'll show you when we actually do it because you'll understand way more when i show you so radial gradient if I put a one in here, I'll give that it to a parameter, why not? Again, to get the one constant, one left click. I think it's just called a constant over the one constant. Point one here. And we'll pop that in our radius. That'll just allow us to change our radius uh, density, essentially. So if I was going to go here now, oops. Set that to, what's my value right now? Five. Yeah. You can change up the density or you can come over here and change the end result um, to have a higher density, something like this. But you can manually do it over here, I'm pretty sure. If I just change density, I believe so anyway. I change that to 10. Yeah, pretty much, except it's a bit sharper. Doing it this way by looks a bit. But you can get the result you want by doing that. Now I'll multiply these together. And that will essentially make it so these edges don't exist anymore. So now it will actually be circular instead of being a, a square with cut off edges. Now I'm going to set that to a multiplier again because what I want to do is I want to be able to customize how strong the waves are. Turn that into wave height. I've defaulted mine at 500. Don't know if that's going to be too high, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. And then I got something called an edge subtract. So I guess I'll have to see what that is. So I've connected that to a subtract over here. Let's see what result we get. Mine set to 
see what difference it makes. All oh, right, that's why I do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, connect it to a uh, subtract over here, and it'll have these nice sharp cut off now. And then you connect that to your opacity mask. So now click in here, change your opaque to masked. We also need to enable uh, tessellation, which if you scroll down, flat tessellation, why not? Cool. And then last but not least, we need to go vertex normal. You always need to do this when you want site to change in height through tessellation. And you just spot apply it by whatever value you want it to be changing by. So I want to be changing by this. And we want it to be in world displacement. Uh, world displacement? Yeah, world displacement. And then I'm just going to set our tessellation to two. Two is the highest value you can have, I'm pretty sure. And we can add a color if we want. So free left click, we get a color in. Um, I've just obviously got mine to be like a gray because it's foam. Go to parameter, change color. And I can change that if I want. Edge subtract. Oh, that is not spelled correctly. Cool. Sweet, sweet, sweet. If I change this as well, I could always go uh, circle mask density. That is not spelled correctly at all. Why don't you guys tell me? There you go. And that is done. I could apply to that. Again, high poly plane. Or relative, it's, it's just got to have a couple of edge loops in there to not be too low poly, is more the issue. So if I type in plane, drag in my new plane. Now there's one big difference that we're gonna see, and I'll explain why as well. This one. So mine, I took off the sh uh, shadows. I thought it looked better, um, at least in my case, without shadows, just because of the way the scene looks. So the way I did that was I clicked in here and I just uh, went to default lit, turned it to unlit, and then instead connected this to my, yeah, of color. You don't need to do that. You can have yours completely 3D. Uh, it, it's just for the scene I wanted it to be um, unlit. There we go, result like that. If we remove you, we can then adjust this to more suit that. So put it slightly underneath the water, make it a bit bigger. So if it starts flickering like this, click your asset, go bound, type bound into the detail tab and set that to a higher number and that'd be fine. You can adjust it in this way if you want, it doesn't really matter too much. Cool. Uh, if we create material instance and throw that on instead, I can then start changing the values. So we want the color to be more white. Yeah. We want more height from it. Cool. I want more contrast. Uh, maybe only like a 0.1. Mm, 0.15. Here, a little bit more height still, maybe 2,000. Could change the scale a little bit. Oh, is that the scale? That is the scale. I clearly accidentally didn't name the scale. If we actually go into that, uh, wrong one. Wait, is that the wrong one? Uh, this one. Oh yeah, param, there you go. Scale, save. It's always good to have the names correct because if you come back to it in like two months time after working on Psycho, you're like, what the hell does param do? I mean, you can change it, you can kind of see, but it's nice to have the naming already correct. Let's go for that, you get to load. Not too shabby. 
just make it a little bit bigger. Get a little bit more height, a more contrast. And yeah, you just mess with it until you get sort of the splashes you're looking for. I can also go the circle radius and make it come out more. But obviously, if you go to the max, you're going to be coming to the end of the square. So you want to be careful with that. If I want something like this. And it saves having to actually scale it. And this one also will sharpen out those edges. So we change that lower. Get a more smoother result. And yeah, just mess with it until you get the splashes you're looking for. I hope this helps some people. Uh, this is really fun when I was originally doing the scene because I was just finding new ways to get certain results. If we actually come back into here, uh, into here, and we turn back on, uh, default lit, take off emissive. We can see how it looks as well with obviously receiving shadows. But again, just for the sake of the scene I was doing, I thought a little bit about them. Wait for it to load. See that? The shadow is always going to be a bit janky because it's just very over the top, isn't it? Uh, it looks kind of cool. It looks like mountains being formed. Like time lapse of a mountain being formed and collapsing. Uh, just this one. Scale turned down. That's pretty cool. But yeah, again, you just mess with it so you get what you want. Right, so I hope you guys enjoyed. It looks really weird having shadows on it. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys next time.